Hi, this is Stu Schwartz of MasterMathMentor.com. This is video AB08A, which is the first part of Chapter 8, dealing with the topic of differentiation techniques. It covers the AB manual, pages 32 and 33. At this point in time, you might wonder why this concept of a derivative which we know is the slope of a tangent line to a curve, is so important that we have an entire math course based on it. Later we're going to examine applications of the derivative and you will then understand its significance. For now you need to trust that derivatives are important and we need to be able to learn to take them rather than going through this very cumbersome limit process. So we're going to learn techniques of differentiation, which is the art of taking derivatives. Our first rule is called the constant rule. It says that the derivative of a constant is zero. This means if c is a real number, the derivative of c with respect to x equals zero. This makes sense from a geometric point of view. The graph of y equals c is a horizontal line, and at any point along that line, its slope must be zero. So, for a, if y equals 9, then y prime has to equal zero. In b, if f of x equals zero, then f prime of x has to also equal zero. c, if we are given the function s of t equals negative 8, then s prime of t has to also equal 0. And in part d, y is equal to 1 over pi cubed. Since pi is a constant, 1 over pi cubed is a constant. And therefore dy dx, note the different notation used here, has to equal 0 as well. Our next rule is called the single variable rule. It says that the derivative of x is equal to 1. That is, the derivative with respect to x of x is equal to 1. This is consistent with the fact that the slope of the line y equals x is 1 at any point on the line. So, in A, if we're told that y equals x, then y prime has to be equal to 1. In B, if f of x equals x, then f prime of x equals 1. In C, if we're given a function s of t, where t represents time, and s of t equals t, then s prime of t equals 1. And in D, if we have a function g of capital T equals capital T, then g prime of capital T also has to equal 1. The first two rules were really simple. But this, the third rule, is a little bit more complicated and is probably the most important rule you will learn this year. It's called the power rule. It says that if n is a rational number, then the function f of x, x to the n, is called differentiable, which we'll explain in a second. And the derivative with respect to x of x to the n is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. The rule is simple. We bring the power in front of the expression and reduce the power of x by 1. Usually we're going to see that some work will need to be done to get in the function in the proper form so we can apply the power rule. Finally, functions for which the derivative exists are called differentiable functions. A function may be differentiable at some va x values and not differentiables at others. We will see some examples of this. In the problems a through d, we want to take the derivative and also determine the values of x where the function either is differentiable or is not differentiable. So in a, if y equals x squared, to take the derivative, we bring the 2 out in front and reduce the power down to 1. So y prime equals 2x. And 2x is a function that's dif differentiable everywhere because it exists for all values of x. 
In B, f of x equals x to the sixth power. So again, to take the derivative, we take the 6, bring it in front, and reduce the power by 1. So f prime of x is equal to 6x to the fifth. Again, this is differentiable everywhere. In C, s of t equals t to the 30th power. So s prime of t has the 30 coming in front and reducing the power of t by 1 to get 30t to the 29th power. Again, this is differentiable everywhere. But in D, when we're given y equals x, the square root of x, the first thing we need to do is write it as x to the 1 half power. So we can apply the power rule. So the 1 half comes in front and we reduce the power by 1, and 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. So y prime equals 1 half x to the negative 1 half. We generally like to leave answers with positive exponents, so our derivative is 1 over 2 x to the 1 half. This is differentiable only for values of x greater than 0. In E, we're given y equals 1 over x. And to use the power rule, we have to write that as x to the negative 1 power. So the derivative y prime equals negative 1 x to the negative 2. And we write that as negative 1 over x squared. This expression is differentiable at all values of x not equal to 0. In F, we have f of x equals 1 over x cubed. And again, to use the power rule, we write that as x to the negative 3 power. So the derivative has the negative 3 coming in front and reducing the power of x by 1. So we get negative 3x to the negative 4th or negative 3 over x to the 4th. This expression is differentiable when x is any value greater than 0. The fourth rule is called the constant multiple rule. It's simple. It says if f is a differentiable function and c is a real number, then the derivative of a constant times f of x is simply equal to c times f prime of x. This means that we can take the constant to the outside and simply multiply it by the derivative of the function. Let's look at some problems that illustrate this rule. In A, we have y equals 2 over x squared. We rewrite that as 2x to the negative second. So y prime is equal to negative 2 times 2, x to the negative third, or negative 4 over x cubed. In B, we have f of x equals 4 thirds x to the third. To take the derivative, we bring the 3 in front, canceling with the 3 in the denominator, and we're left with 4, and the power of x reduces by 1, or 4x squared. In C, we have s of t equals negative t to the fifth power. You can think of this as negative 1 times t to the fifth power. So s prime of t is equal to negative 1 times 5, t to the fourth, or negative 5t to the fourth. Finally, in D, we have y equals 4 over this 4 times the square root of x. We need to rewrite that as 4x to the 1 half power to use the power rule. So to take the derivative, the 1 half gets put in front, multiplying by the 4, to get 2x to the negative 1 half, or 2 over x to the 1 half power. In E, we have y equals 5 over 3x to the third, which can be rewritten as 5 thirds x to the negative third power. When we take the derivative, the negative 3 comes in front, and we are left with y prime equals negative 5x to the negative fourth power, or negative 5 over x to the fourth. In F, we have f of x equals negative 5 over quantity, 3x to the third power. So we have to expand the denominator, getting 27x to the third, and we can write the expression as negative 5 over 27x 
to the negative 3 power. So when we take the derivative, the negative 3 comes in front, multiplying by the negative 5, and we get 15 over 27x to the negative 4 power. And we can reduce the 15 over 27, getting 5 over 9x to the 4th power for the derivative. In g, we have s of t equals 40 over the square root of t. And we need to rewrite that as 40t to the negative 1 half power. So taking the derivative, the negative 1 half comes in front, multiplied by 40 to get negative 20t to the negative 3 halves power, or negative 20 over t to the 3 halves. And finally, in h, we have y equals 12 over the cube root of x to the fifth. Rewriting, we get 12x to the negative 5 thirds. So to take the derivative, we bring the negative 5 thirds in front, multiplying by the 12 to get tw negative 20, and subtract 1 from the power, and we get x to the negative 8 thirds, or negative 20 over x to the 8 thirds power. A word about notation. Many times we have to do some work so that we are ready to apply our rules to take the derivative. When we do that, we have to make sure that we are continually writing y equals or f of x equals to show that that is still the original expression. When we take the derivative, it is important to use the notation y prime equals or f prime of x equals at that transition point when we actually take the derivative to show that is the process that's being done. And if we have to, we can then continually write an equal sign to show that this is the derivative, not the function. The fifth rule is called the sum or difference rule. It says that the derivative of a sum or difference is the sum or difference of the derivatives. So the derivative with respect to x of f of x plus or minus g of x is f prime of x plus or minus g prime of x. So what this says is that if we have a sum or difference, we take the derivative of each term. In a, we have y equals x squared plus 5x minus 3. We take the derivative of each term and we get 2x plus 5. Remember that the 3 is a constant and the derivative of a constant is 0 and we do not write it. In B, we have a longer expression. f of x equals x to the fourth minus 3 halves x third plus 2x squared plus x minus 6. But again, all we need to do is to take the derivative is to take the derivative of each term. So we get f prime of x equals 4x to the third minus 9 halves x squared plus 4x plus 1. Again, we do not have to worry about the derivative of negative 6 because that's 0. In 9, we have y equals quantity 2x minus 3 quantity squared. At this point, the only option that we have is to expand the expression and take the derivative of it. So when we expand, we get 4x squared minus 12x plus 9, and the derivative is simply 8x minus 12. In video number 9, we will see that there are other options to work, work this problem, but for right now, this is the only way to do it. In D, we have y equals 4 over x minus 4 over x squared plus 4 over x to the third. The first thing we need to do is to prepare the expression for use by the power rule. So we write it as y equals 4x to the negative 1 minus 4x to the negative 2 plus 4x to the negative 3. We're now ready to use the power rule for the derivative. At this point, we say y prime equals negative 4x to the negative 2 plus 8x to the negative 3 minus 12x to the negative 4. Now we would like to simplify the expression by eliminating the negative exponents. So we write y prime equals negative 4 over x squared plus 8 over x to the third minus 12 over x to the fourth. It is important that 
we write y equals when we are simplifying the original expression. And at the transition point, we change it to y prime equals. Some students just work on the right-hand side and forget that they need to continually write equations that either say y equals or y prime equals. In E, we have f of x equals 6 square root of x times the quantity 2 square root of x minus 3. At this point, in order to take the derivative, we have to have individual terms. So we multiply this out to get 12x minus 18x to the 1 half. We're now free to take the deriv derivative, and we now write it as f prime of x equals 12 minus 9x to the negative 1 half. And eliminating the negative exponent, we write it as 12 minus 9 over, and we can either write x to the 1 half or the square root of x. In f, we have y equals quantity x squared minus x plus 1, quantity squared over 2. First thing we need to do is to write this as 1 half times the expression that is multiplied out. We get x to the fourth minus 2x to the third plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. At this point, we could multiply each term by 1 half, but we can say that y prime is equal to 1 half times the derivative of that expression. 4x to the third minus 6x squared plus 6x minus 2. You could leave the answer like that, or then at this point multiply everything by 1 half to get 2x to the third minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. In g, we have y equals 8 over the square root of x minus 6 over the cube root of x. So, first step is to write these using powers, 8x to the negative 1 half minus 6x to the negative 1 third. When we take the derivative, you have to be very careful with your signs and your powers. We get negative 4x to the negative 3 halves plus 2x to the negative 4 thirds, and we can write that as negative 4 over x to the 3 halves plus 2 over x to the 4 thirds. In H, we have y equals 9x minus 3 square root of x over x. At this point, we only have one choice, to split this into two individual fractions. So we look at 9x over x and 3 square root of x over x, and we get y equals 9 minus 3 over the square root of x, or 9 minus 3x to the negative 1 half power. Taking the derivative dy dx, the derivative of a 9 is 0, so we end up simply getting 3 over 2 x to the negative 3 halves, or 3 over 2 x to the 3 halves power. In i, we have y equals x squared minus 6x minus 16, all over 2x plus 4. In the next video, you will find that there is another way of dealing with this. But for right now, our only choice is to factor both numerator and denominator, getting x plus 2 times x minus 8 over 2 times x plus 2. The x plus 2s cancel, and we're left with y equals x minus 8 over 2. We can split this into two terms, x over 2 minus 4. So the derivative of this difficult-looking expression is simply 1 half.